I don't remember meeting Mr. King in a busy campaign season that year. Tuh, you a lie. But whatever the case, <laughs> you gonna remember my black ass now, woman. Tell you that. Alexa, I'm shattered right now. I'll tell you what, I'm shattered. Jenny Durkin's uh, defenses in the case are shattered. Uh, I'm shattered because I was up all night responding to their nonsense, okay? And I'm going to work you through that right now. Uh, God, and I had some other projects. I'm on like three and a half hours of sleep, okay, guys? So just bear with me here. So, first things first. As you all know, or many of you know, I sued Jenny Durkin because I asked for a sit-down meeting, okay? I asked for a meeting with her. I was with Breonna Corbray, a black cannabis uh, professional who was uh, escorted out of his industry when he had three uh, medical shops, three medical dispensaries. He was escorted out of his career by Jenny Durkin when she was a U.S. prosecutor. She attacked, they shut down all the, the medicals, okay, to make money for their cronies at the uh, LCB, but they went extra hard on, on brother, all right? So anyway, since the city is so allegedly <clears throat> concerned about uh, equitous, uh, equitous <laughs> that's a new word, equity and cannabis, equitous, I like it, uh, equity and cannabis, uh, and, and, and they're involved with this allegedly, okay, and they want this to happen, even though it's been what, nine years since one of us had a license, uh, what it is is they should be, you know, serious about this, right? So I wrote this letter to Durkin and I said, hey, can we have a sit down with Brianna Corbray and talk about what, you know, blah, 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 right? Well, she never responded, okay? So time took on and then like a month, month went by and I said, okay, uh, give me all the emails relating to what I just asked you, you know? Did, did, did anybody talk about this or what, right? Okay. Uh, and then I, uh, since, since that time I've, I've subsequently amended that to include all communications, okay? Because as you know, she's being sued right now uh, by the uh, the uh, Times, I think, Seattle Times, they call that rag, whatever. Uh, she's being sued by them right now uh, because of the email delete thing she had going on. So I, I want everything, the universe. All right. So get my, uh, when you file a lawsuit, by the way, you, you if you're smart, which I am almost sometimes kind of, you want to issue your discovery responses along with the, 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 the lawsuit so that they have 30 or 40 days uh, to respond, you know, instead of like in mid litigation asking them for stuff. So you get right off the bat, okay? And I'm a master at that, and I deciphered their bullshit really quickly. So here's what happened in the case. Now, I have three points of contention. The first I'm going to deal with is the way that they responded to me. I asked a standard question. I'm going to deal with. Three things, as I said. First, the implication that I'm dangerous or harassing, okay? Second, the uh, fact that they didn't respond to my discovery request uh, in terms of my request for production of documents. No response to that whatsoever. And third, uh, being basically that in the interrogatories, uh, they admit Jenny Durkin, for her part, Remember, there, there are a couple different defendants here. There's a city, and then there's Durkin, all right? Durkin admitted that she responded to me on July 2nd. And we're going to get to that in a minute, all right? But that was after I filed the lawsuit. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so, gotcha. All right, so, so all right, let's go back now and talk about the, the violence part, okay? So what I did was, since I knew this was coming, I said uh, in my interrogatories, I said, you know, state whether Durkin had any concerns about my professionalism or was I threatening or opposing in any way when I interviewed her in 2017 before the mayoral election, okay? And she responded back with, oh, I don't recall meeting you. Um, I don't recall meeting Mr. King in a busy campaign season. And I'm like, well, that's interesting. I mean, maybe she doesn't. It's possible. She meets a lot of people. But it was a very unique moment in time with her and Carrie Moon because I did what most journalists don't do, and I still have the footage. I was on the floor in front of them over there in um, in uh, Greenwood at the theater. I was like in front of them, sprawled out, getting excellent footage, which I still have it. I was right behind, you know, like Gizmo and the Flintstones. I was right, right, right behind her like that, okay? So maybe she doesn't remember it, I don't know. But also at the time I had a gimbal, which were a pretty big deal back then for a while. And uh, people aren't running them as much now, but I had a gimbal. And uh, Carrie Moon, they hadn't seen anything like it yet. 
And so this, you all see the pictures. I'm walking in front of City Hall with the gimbal. Everybody's smiling, having a great old time, and all that stuff, right? So anyway, I asked if there was any concerns about my professionalism or if I was threatening and this and that and the other. And the response was like, I don't really recall me eating your black ass, all right? Well, guess what? <laughs> You're going to remember me now, Jenny. <laughs> That's the fun part. So, but look at the converse of that, though. And when I wrote back in the letter you can see online, I said, well, you know what? Uh, let's look at it in the converse then. Because if I had been very unprofessional or very threatening toward her, it would have made an impression. So she would remember that, right? Right. Therefore, you really don't have any basis to assume that I'm going to be harassive or anything like that or do anything untoward or unlawful toward, toward her. Because what I did was the very first question is a standard question. You ask for the, every address a person's lived at for the last 10, 20 years, whatever, and their name, whatever, and all that stuff, right? So it's a standard question, all right? All they had to do, all the lawyers had to do was write, write me back and say, hey, do you really need the address? It's the mayor. You know, she's been having issues with this, that, and the other. I would have said, ah, no, no, I don't need it. I don't need it. But instead, that, that's not what they did. But instead, they took time to open their responses out to me, you know, saying that oh, I, we object to this because, you know, there's this, it, it, there's this implied threat or it's, it's being done to harass her or anything, shit like that. And I'm like, I said, look. White lawyers in this uh, city have tried to make me into a dangerous black man before. They paid for that, okay? And I, I, I warned counsel. Uh, I said, uh, Corral, I said, don't do that again. Ever. All right? We're both professionals. I did videos and events with City Hall, with Nick Licata, with Mike O'Brien, with Jamison Want. All right? Do not ever in your life again accuse me of being unlawfully harassed or threatening in any way, shape, or form. Got it? Get it. Done with that. Next. Pepper, you want a treat? The holy pepper you come before a treat. Oh, that's good. Uh, let me hit the CBD for a second. Because this is just, this is about to get ridiculous now. So keep in mind that there's two defendants, okay? And it's basically the city council. And Mayor Durkin said, all right. And city council, for their part, they provided me a few documents, but basically it was stuff that I, I had given them, all right? So I got that stuff from the legislative branch, and it's, and, uh, but the problem was the letter I originally wrote to Jen, it, to, it was to Jenny, period. It, you know, when I CC city council, that's true, all right? But it was to Jenny. And I didn't get anything back from her until after I filed. So in their responses, they tried to say, oh, that's disingenuous, that's not accurate, you know. But in the same sitting, they admitted liability because there's no reason that Jenny couldn't have got me a response back before July 2nd. Okay? Get it? I've been asking, you know, since November. Right. And, what, and guess what she gave me back, though, when I went to pull it up? All it was was my press release about Sean Kemp, that, that Luna, Luna Brea wrote a story about it in the, in the South Seattle Emerald. I'm the one that wrote that press release and put that out there like that because of, of, of my association with Breon at the time and Tim. Um, they know, you know, Mr. Goodcush and, and Bud Margins, they know Sean Kemp. And they knew he was like a 5% or maybe 10 at the most percent owner of, of Sean Kemp Cannabis. So I exposed that. I did that. All right. So, but anyway, so they still haven't provided me any documents. All right, any emails, nothing to this date. Maybe, maybe a couple at the very beginning, but it was really nothing there. So you understand what I'm saying? Ultimately, is if this city and this mayor are so concerned about, you know, uh, what did I call it before? I won't think cannabis equity. All right. If they're that concerned about it, how could there not be any emails? Any responsive documents then in the hopper? That doesn't make any sense, does it? Hell no, it doesn't make any sense. All right? But they haven't said that. Understand? So they're, <laughs> they're kind of doing this dance with me, right? All right, I'll get down with you, all right? So uh, and anyway, with this, going back real quickly to this threatening bit, they put a link to something that was on King 5. Well, it didn't even, <laughs> it's a 404 that, that's dead. Whatever that story was is dead, so I don't know what you're talking about. So anyway, that was the third thing in my response to them. And what I wrote her is basically, 
uh, an attachment A to what would be a, what's called a motion to compel if they don't do right, okay? So now I'm going to go back into the more of the substantive things now since I've addressed the, the character, the, the, the less than benign character attack against me, all right? So now I pointed out at the beginning, uh, your client has what's called an 801 admission for liability for the dependent Durkin, Durkin taking seven months to respond to my request, you know? Huh? And that's true. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And so there were three different responses, three different groups. And in, in the first sequence, that was, the response was from the legislative branch, okay? And, uh, and there's three documents attached there. I, I couldn't retrieve them online anymore, but I'm willing to bet those are my own documents, okay? So you have to give me shit, all right? And then there was a response um, later. There's also a response from, from uh, well, there, okay, so the first groups of numbers both dealt with the legislative branch, okay? And basically the second one was just me clarifying something, all right? At no point in time, they, they responded to me like in November, uh, all right, uh, November 24th and December 1st. But again, they just sent me, they regurgitated what I had sent them, pretty much, all right? And so, okay. <clears throat> so we still don't have any record of the mayor's office or anybody actually caring about this request <clears throat> that I made with Mr. Corbray for a sit down. Okay, that's not cool, uh, given that's such a big issue. And that the city's involved in it, right? right? Equity for blacks, BIPOCs, cannabis, equity. Yeah, they care a lot. So, uh, yeah, I just I clarified them um, on that point. And I said, uh, bottom line, your client's attempts to obfuscate do not resonate well with me, counselor. Go back and review the receipt of the initial email. As Mayor Durkin was uh, only on the initial request for conference with Mr. Corbray. She's the only one there. All right, so don't obfuscate with talking about what the legislative branch might have given me or, or the city council, whatever they did. I mean, they're secondary to the mayor. All right? God. And then she admits, you know, uh, that, again, she never sent me anything. Durkin didn't until the 2nd of July, which was my own document set after I filed the lawsuit on 11 June. Okay, so therefore, the litigation was necessary to even get that response from her, all right? Right? Declaratory judgment there, right? Since you had it in your possession, I'll... Not now. All right, he'll probably call again one more time too, but... Uh, sometimes I want to put it on... I should put it on Do Not Disturb. That would probably work, and I can still probably do the Wi-Fi if I do, do Not Disturb. I'll try that next time. So, um, yeah, so that's that piece. And one other piece to the mayor's tardy response, she wrote me, and this was, oh, sometime in May or something, and she said, this communication is a response to your public disclosure request number C067258-112820, received on November 28, 2020, okay? The purpose of this email is to provide a status update regarding your request. The mayor's office needs additional time to respond to your request due to the current volume of disclosure request. Bullshit. All right. At this time, the department anticipates that it will be able to provide the requested records or first installment of records on or about July 2nd, uh, 2021. Sincerely, Office of the Mayor, City of Seattle. Okay. Despite all that, all right, we're in uh, August now, but pretty much. And I have nothing except that my own document. So, how stupid is that guy look going into court, right? And then they talk about additional installments, all of a sudden the other. But the bottom line is, they still didn't respond to my document requests, all right? I'm going to file a motion to compel. I told the lawyer, I'm going to file a motion to compel on Monday. I'm not here to mess around with you, all right? It's just unbelievable. You thought I wouldn't notice that or what? So, I give them a number of different... Uh, action items in my letter, which you can read yourself. I'm not going to go through all of them right now. I'm about to be done right now so I can eat lunch and take a nap. But what I requested was, one, provide a copy of each and every correspondence from Mayor Durkin 
or any other city staffer that resulted from the October request for equity conference as noted in plaintiff's complaint, paragraph 8, in the attendant appendix. This includes written notes, emails, post-its, sticky tabs, and text messages. Okay? They have to give me that. It doesn't matter what they may have given me before, you know, uh, pursuant to my public records request. This is under oath. This is a court document. So, what, are you trying to play me for stupid or what? I mean, it's not going to go over well. Just stop. So, I also said, provide any and all documents that explain why the city has not provided plaintiff one single document since he asked for emails back on or about 25 November, more than six months ago. All right, so they have to answer that. So, they're going to dance around that too, whatever the case is. All right. I need all the documents, the universe. And I think that's all I need to tell you right now, folks. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that's really it that, that's going on right now. So, uh, basically, I don't have shit. <laughs> I, just, I, I don't have shit from them. And it's got to get interesting because based on what's before me right now, I'm going to walk into court and spank that ass royally, all right? It's, yeah, so, anyway, um, let's see what else they got, all right? And you have now sat through your first installment of the Durkin Monologues. That's what I'm going to call it, the Durkin Monologues. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Uh, anything else? That's about it. See you soon. Oh, Peppa, say hi to the people. Oh, did you hi to the people? Oh, you're so good. Oh, Peppa. <laughs> She's the best dog. Oh, my God. Oh, Peppers. <laughs> <laughs> Been blessed. Pepper, Livy, was blessed. Livy was not so blessed.